Join the Morning Glory family. Visit us online at EWTNMorningGlory.com. Catholic from the start, giving glory to God as we start this October 14th morning, a Thursday. I'm Brian Patrick with Gloria Purvis. Good morning. Elisa Murphy, our producer, our godly counsel, Father Bjorn Lundberg. Good morning. And our special guest this morning is Kirsten Evans, Executive Director of Defense of Christians. Good morning. Welcome, Kirsten. So, Kirsten, before we get into the nitty-gritty, I have to ask the nitty-gritty, how do you know Father Bjorn Lund- Lundberg? <laughs> well, it's funny. When your team called me, uh, he, he for many years ago, I won't say how many, both for um, the safety of, of myself and Father's uh, discretion, um, his older sister and I used to drive to Paul VI High School in the Diocese of Arlington together. Kristen, you were revealing the secret me. why I'm at John Paul the Great, because my dad wanted me to go to Paul VI, and I refused. <laughs> so God said, if you won't go to Catholic High School now, I'll send you back as a chaplain. <laughs> yeah, that's, God has a great sense of he humor, does. Father. Yeah. <laughs> what a great story. So can you tell us any little tidbits about Father Bjorn that we might have missed? <laughs> I think I better not. <laughs> you know what? I like you. I like you. Did you sing yes. in the choir with I, my I mom? Can, I can say that he came from a, a lovely family. A Very beautiful good. Beautiful family. Very That's good. Say Father, something. I'll positive. send you some money. You know Thank you. That Father, was awesome. This is what they call a ride or die chick. She's with <laughs> you. She's not gonna. Yeah, I like you. That you was can, a good You can be on my squad. My sister's anytime. gonna be very happy when she listens to that this morning. The kids. <laughs> hey, it's Kirsten. So tell us a little bit about your work for In Defense of Christians. What is the apostolate that you're involved with? Well, we represent, uh, or or we we try to organize, and we represent the concerns and the needs of Middle Eastern Christians. Um, in, here in the United States, we're Washington-based. We do political advocacy and education in Washington as well as internationally and try to raise awareness generally in the public about the situation of the Christian communities in the Middle East, which, as you know, um, sadly is, is, is dire and seems to be getting more and more dire every day. In fact, the U.S. State Department issued a statement yesterday really acknowledging that did any of the findings in that report surprise you? No, uh, no, none of the findings in that in that support in that report surprise us. And um, we've been following this issue along with many other organizations. And um, you know, I think it's there for for most of the world to see. Right? We have been very active in the past months to try to get a bill uh, passed in Congress, it was presented to the to. Uh, to the floor of Congress and trying to get it passed through Congress, which would recognize the situation of Christians under ISIS and other minorities, Yazidis and other religious minorities, as a genuine genocide in, as is defined in international law. And um, we feel very strongly that there's the, the, the treatment of minorities under ISIS is, meets every definition of genocide. As you know, Pope Francis has used the word genocide multiple times when talking about the situation in the region. When he was at the UN just a few weeks ago, um, he didn't call the situation of the Christian communities as a genocide per se, but the, the language that he used when, when asking the leaders of the world to what he called a call to conscience in order to um, address the situation, the language mirrored almost identically the definitions of genocide in international law. And it's getting increasingly um, worse. Ambassador at Large for Religious Freedom, uh, Rabbi David Saperstein, in releasing that report yesterday, said... The escalation of the violence perpetrated uh, by non-state actors, often in the name of their interpretation of uh, religion, is a new phenomenon that has really escalated in the last uh, in the last eighteen months. Kirsten, is this really a new yeah. phenomenon, or just is there a new attack that's been mounted? Well, you know, I, I think um, I think that uh, the ambassador Saperstein is is very right in saying that it's a new phenomenon when he talks about the non-state actors, right? We are used to you talk, you know, John Paul II would always say the twentieth century was a century of martyrs. Um, more martyrs in the 20th century than there had been in any other centuries uh, previous of the Church. The, 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 that martyrdom generally took place um, by state actors. It say, generally took place under government regimes um, or um, governments that were themselves persecuting, denying the human rights of their own citizens. What we've seen, and I think what the world has sort of scrambled to try to know how to respond to, 
in the area of religious freedom is very similar to what the world has had to scramble in response to in the area of, of national and international security with terrorism. We're dealing with organizations that, um, that aren't states. They're not established entities. They're not, um, ISIL, of course, likes to call itself a state. They're not recognized by anyone in the world, obviously, as, as any kind of a legitimate, a legit, legit, legitimate state with any kind of sovereignty. Um, and so that does um, bring about its own set of challenges to the international community. Um, you know, we've seen this sort of lone wolf kind of phenomena where um, you have these ISIL cells that are popping up in, in random countries and, and persecuting individuals or communities in the name of ISIL. And, um, you know, it's, you kind of don't really know where, when or where you're going uh, to find some of the agents of, of this philosophy and of this, um, this terrorist group. So it does pose a unique, unique challenges. Kirsten, do you have a website if we wanted to follow the work of In Defense of Christians? We do. It's um, www.indefensivechristians.org. Um, you can also see our recent event. We had a large event in Washington about a month ago at... Um, www.idcconvention.org. If your listeners wanted to do something proactive themselves, they can re- contact their congressman, and they can do that very easily through our website, mm-hmm. idcconvention.org. Um, with a few clicks of a button, they can send a letter to their congressman, and they can ask their congressman to support the bill that would recognize the treatment of minorities under ISIS as a genuine genocide. And this is important in, on the world stage because it elevates the, um, the, the elevates the level of importance that's given to the issue in the United States Congress. Um, it also brings with it a certain kind of moral weight for the international community as far as expanding aid, expanding asylum and refugee asylum, giving a certain um, consideration for the vulnerability of the community when looking at, um, at visas and refugees, and brings really the international community more to task to how are we going to solve not just the problem of ISIS, but how are we going to defend these most defenseless and these most vulnerable communities that are um, that are being so brutally persecuted under under their thumb? So well, I'm, I'm so IDC glad you brought up IDCConvention.org. A... Say that again. The website IDCConvention.org. If you go on that yeah. website, you'll find an action link. Really, within three clicks, any one of your listeners can immediately send a letter to their congressional representative saying. I'm concerned about Christians in the Middle East. My community is concerned about Christians in the Middle East, and we're asking you to support this bill um, in order to name this as a genuine genocide. We can all do that. We can certainly all take that Mm -hmm. step, and I know that a lot of us want to be proactive here. It seems like something we can't do anything about, but obviously we can at least have an impact. And this is what we talked about, the appropriate use of technology, using technology for something good. Networking people, getting people together. Yeah, let's flood our uh, members of Congress with Mm -hmm. these mails, uh, these emails. Tell us the website one more time. Uh, It's uh, www.idcconvention.org, and you're going to want to look for the action alert. Action. Let's do Let's action. Faith without works is dead. Yes, indeed. All right, Kirsten Evans, thanks so much. You sure you don't want to reveal any secrets about Father Bjorn before we let you go? (laughs) Nothing you heard from his sister? I was the bratty little brother at that point. I was just in grade school. You see their tactic, they're talking over you, so you can't say anything. I'll call you later. Okay, I'll call you later.